Good morning. A little while ago, many of you responded to a survey that we sent out to you from the church office. The survey was the result of quite a number of video conferences and emails over the summer among the worship team, the property team, the staff, and myself about how and when we could think about reopening the church for worship and other in-person gatherings uh, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. When we started meeting in late May, we thought we were talking about a few more weeks, maybe a, a month or so, of being shut down. But as the summer went on, we kept having to push that target back because Virginia case numbers were still rising or at least not declining very much. So I'd like to just share a bit with you about the survey results and to thank you for your participation in it and to see if I can respond to some of the hopes and concerns that you all raised in some of the comments. You will also be able to see the substance of these remarks in the September-October newsletter, which you should be receiving uh, sometime this week. In all, we received 93 responses to the survey. Of these respondents, 72% said that they would not attend in-person worship services, services excuse me, under the recommended safety protocols. Um, which were outlined at the beginning of the survey, as you'll recall. And 28% of you said that you would attend. A few of you thought that the safety protocols we outlined were not restrictive enough, while a few others thought that they were too restrictive. Most of the respondents who commented said that they thought the restrictions were just about right, but some of these same respondents also said that with the necessary restrictions on singing and having fellowship afterwards and other things that would be taken away from the, the normal Sunday morning experience, they would actually prefer to stay home and watch the online service. I do want to take a minute to address a couple of misperceptions that emerged from the survey comments. Uh, one of them has to do with what restrictions we would place on individuals attending worship in person. So to be clear, we will strongly encourage church members who are considered high risk to stay home. And high risk would include those over age 65, having an underlying health condition, or having someone at home in these categories. We will encourage that, but we will not turn you away if you do show up. So we are not going to be checking anyone's driver's license at the door. However, we do want to note these limiting conditions as a way of keeping you and your loved ones as safe as possible as you consider whether or not to return to in-person services. The other thing I want to clarify is why we shut down in the first place and why we have continued to stay closed. The PCUSA did not order us to shut our doors last March. All our denomination had done was to put out some guidelines and recommendations and encourage churches to follow their own state and local ordinances and guidelines. Uh, the PCUSA also provided some recommended protocols for helping to prevent the spread of the virus when churches did open up again for in-person services. So we didn't close or stay closed because the PCUSA told us to. Um, our presbytery also advised congregations under its jurisdictions, its jurisdiction to close and remain closed until infection rates in our area began to decline significantly. But again, the presbytery did not order us to close. To my knowledge, the majority of churches in our presbytery are choosing to stay closed for the time being, although some have reopened for limited numbers of worshipers. 
I should also note that the state of Virginia is still advising congregations against in-person worship at this time. So where does this leave us? For the time being, we will continue to stay closed, but we are looking at some ways in which we can open up the sanctuary to a limited number of people for in-person worship on some Sundays. An example was last Sunday, August 30th, uh, when Pastor Dawn came to preach and lead worship, and then we had the congregational meeting to elect her as your next pastor. On that Sunday, we had the elders, the deacons, and members of the PNC here in the sanctuary. September 27th will be Confirmation Sunday, so we'll have the youth being confirmed and their close family members as well as 11 elders in the sanctuary on that day. And we're looking at some other possible opportunities for different groups of the church to attend worship in person on certain Sundays. And we will let you know about them. And of course, we will continue live streaming the services for as long as we are able to do that. Uh, this pandemic is likely to continue well into 2021. So we know that even with a gradual reopening of the church building for some activities, there are still going to be many members who are going to need to stay home or will simply prefer to. Several of you noted in your comments that you missed having communion. All I can say is that I miss it too. Uh, the fasting service of the Lord's Supper that we had in July was really meant to be an expression of that longing that, that we share. World Communion Sunday is coming up in October, so I'm looking at a way that we might be able to celebrate communion as a congregation on that Sunday um, in a way that is safe and also consistent with our theology of the Lord's Supper. So I will keep you posted on that. Now, many of you offered some really good ideas in the comments that you attached to your survey res responses. I, they will be shared with the appropriate ministry teams and the session and the staff and I will also consider them. But I do need to say, um, just as a little bit of a caveat, <laughs> that our worship and AV teams are stretched pretty thin right now, just doing what we are doing. Uh, we have an AV team of three and a worship team of three to address all the logistical and technological issues that, that would be involved in being able to provide both in-person worship, possibly outside, as several of you have suggested, along with the continued remote access services. Um, keep in mind, too, that every time a group gathers in the building, we need additional support from Russell and the property team, as well as additional sanitizing resources to keep the spaces clean and disinfected both before and after being used. Just as an example, an effort like Montreat at Home, um, which took place in July, just took a tremendous amount of planning and logistical coordination, um, not even to mention all the tech support that was needed to make it happen. So everything we do now um, it just, it just takes longer, requires more resources, requires more people. When we had to shut down last March, I just never dreamed that we would be going into the fall with this pandemic still raging and keeping us apart from each other. COVID-19 has changed our lives, and probably for good in some ways. We're not going to easily return to congregational life as it was before last March. But we are taking small steps to move toward more in-person interactions with each other. And I'm hopeful that these small steps will gradually help recreate 
that sense of community that I know everyone has been missing. In the meantime, I just ask you to stay safe, be healthy, and we will keep you posted about what is coming up. May the peace of Christ be with you.